Well, hello, hello, everyone. So this is Dr. Almig, your friendly rheumatologist, and I'm right here in Denver, Colorado, outside of beautiful weather. Hopefully, it's going to be quiet enough. And I'm going to talk about vasculitis today, and more specifically, Anca vasculitis, and more specifically, uh, something that we used to call a uh, Wegener disease, but we actually call now uh, granulomatosis with polyangitis or GPA. And that's part of what we call the anca vasculitis, which otherwise has also something called microscopic polyangitis, MPA. I'm never going to use those words anymore. So GPA and MPA, and really what we're going to talk about is anca vasculitis. <laughs> so first thing first is... Um, this is a question uh, that came from um, one of my patients because she was wondering if she had this. And I want to start with the story uh, that happened. So, uh, number one, she, uh, so if you are listening, you do not have a Wegener uh, or GPA. Uh, and the second thing is basically what she, like she, she came across one member of her circle that had some symptoms, had been referred to rheumatology, but because of the waiting time, did not see any rheumatology and she died. And she was, this person was very young and it breaks my heart, it really does, because no patients should die without seeing a rheumatologist and no patient should ever, ever die without trying steroid first. Um, and um, anyone that's my patient know that I don't like steroids, but I also love steroids. I don't like steroids for my patients because I feel like I know what they have, or at least we're figuring it out. And if they are under my care, my goal is to find remission without the need of steroids, but, you know, over medication, because we have so many. Uh, but a patient that has some symptoms that are, and that, you know, clearly are looking like they might, you know, uh, potentially get severely debilitated, like we have to try steroids in those patients because sometimes it's just a matter of figuring out what's going on and the steroids are going to help us save some time, okay? Um, and so this is my call to action. If you know uh, either you or you know someone that has potentially a rheumatologic disorder, don't wait. Um, you can see me, sure, of course, but you can see also a lot of other rheumatologists. Um, you can call, you can ask your primary care physician to call. Don't, don't end up like this. It's so sad. It's heartbreaking. Um, it's, it's to me something that could have been prevented and I just want to prevent it. So if you're listening, that means that you're educating yourself. So that means it's never going to happen to you. Um, but yeah, please, you know, and contact us if you need it. Okay. All right, now that uh, I've uh, talked to you about why it's so important and why I wanted to talk about this, let's talk about vasculitis. So um, a lot of very fancy words, right? What is vasculitis? Vasculitis, like its word says, vascular, so vascular, so vessel, itis means inflammation. So vasculitis is basically inflammation of the vessel. And in uh, rheumatology and medicine, we divide this in three big categories. There's the large vessel vasculitis, there's the medium vessel vasculitis, and then there's small vessel vasculitis. Large vessel vasculitis, usually we're talking about something temporal arteritis. It's uh, why I'm showing here is because we take a biopsy here uh, in patients who have headaches, uh, who have very high fevers, um, who may have lost some vision, and we see that there is inflammation of the large vessel and that temporal arteritis, so the temporal artery here. And so uh, you do a biopsy or you look at uh, if it's indurated and you can make a diagnosis of um, temporal arteritis. Um, but, and then we have the medium vessel vasculitis. Uh, the main one is called PAN and it's basically associated with hepatitis B, which is less and less common in Western words. So I'm not gonna uh, talk too much about this or at all really. But then there's the small vessel vasculitis. And the small vessel vasculitis are really what we see the most when it comes to um, vasculitis in rheumatology because there's a lot of them, a lot of them. And anca vasculitis is one of them. And so when we call it anca vasculitis, what we're talking about is a vasculitis of the small vessel that is associated with anca. Uh, so those are antibodies. 
what we have to know is that it's not all of the time that you're going to have the antibodies. And so having the antibodies is very useful for the diagnosis, but you may not have the antibody. And then on the other hand, um, you may have an antibody and not have the symptoms of ankyl vasculitis. And so this is where you need a rheumatologist to really help you figure out what you have. So that's number one. And then in the ankyl vasculitis uh, uh, segment, uh, we have two types. Uh, and I mentioned it earlier. I said GPA and MPA. GPA is what we used to call Wegener, and that's the one I'm going to talk about because that's the question. And if you want me to talk about the other one, please ask the question and I'll, I'll be happy to. So how does GPA or Wegener present? Well, so it's a small vessel vasculitis, and so it's going to present uh, in a very various way. Uh, usually, patients are going to take a little bit of time to build up the symptoms. And they're going to have what we call the B or constitutional symptoms. So it's fatigue, just feeling uh, malaise, uh, not feeling great, um, or fevers, um, and basically just like having some sweats at night and it's and like losing some weight. They are just like patients are not feeling good. And that's because there is inflammation of all of those small vessels. And you may not see an organ involved just yet, but you are already brewing some symptoms. And then other symptoms are going to depend on which organ is affected. The two main ones that, uh, that are the most common, I would say, are pulmonary, so you can actually have nodules in the lungs, uh, and that can actually cause uh, hemoptysis, which is basically coughing up blood. Uh, and um, the other big one is uh, the kidney involvement. And the kidney involvement is a little harder to manifest itself, right? Because except for fatigue, maybe except for some changes in the urine, maybe the fact that you're not peeing as usual, it's really hard for someone that doesn't have access to uh, blood work to know that they have some issues with their kidneys. And really the role of your doctor is going to be, hmm, something is off. Hmm, you have had some fever for a while. Hmm, maybe you have some inflammation of the skin and that is gonna, uh, I didn't talk about that, but that's gonna be like uh, what we call purpura, which is basically a rash. And when you push on the rash, uh, it doesn't uh, go away. Uh, and it's like some small dots, maybe with a little bit of crusted lesion. That is what we call purpuron. You can look, usually it's on the feet um, and that's where it hides, but it can be like lower in the lower extremities, sometimes in the buttock. And that's what we call the purpura, right? And, and that's the role of the rheumatologist to look for this. Um, but yeah, when your primary care physician looks at you, if if you are talking about, well, I'm not feeling great, I have some fevers, um, night sweats, there is the you know red flag in the mind of any doctor, which is like, mm, can this be infection? Can this be cancer? And then can this be a rheumatologic disorder? I would say the rheumatologic disorder, usually the rheumatologists are thinking about this. I don't know that every single primary care physician thinks about this, but they should. And, um, and the reason why I'm saying they should is that then we need to do a urine analysis and look for protein and red blood cells and urine active sediment in the urine because that is going to tell us if something is going on in your kidneys, right? So you, you have the uh, creatinine. Most of you guys know what this is. It's, it's what's going to help us uh, figure out what the function in the kidney is. Uh, so that's the GFR, uh, but it's, it's, and it's calculated thanks to the creatinine. Um, but you can totally have a normal creatinine and have glomerulonephritis, which is inflammation of the glomeruli, uh, glomeruli, so the glomerules uh, of the kidneys. And that will only show itself at first with protein in the urine, with blood in the urine, with uh, cells in the urine. And that is absolutely abnormal. And isn't it so cool? Because you can feel like, oh my gosh, this is awful. Or you can think, isn't it so cool that I can actually see that there is my kidney that's involved without having yet hurt my kidney function? And so that is how you want to see it. It's like, hey, I want to check my protein in the urine. Can we do that? 
And the truth is that there's a very cheap way to do this with a urinary, urinary dipstick where you just check and they can, they can look at it um, in the office. And otherwise, it's just a urine sample. Okay, so you always check chest x-ray. You always ask the patient, do you have shortness of breath? Do you have cough? Do you have any hoarseness? Anything like this? <clears throat> and then you always, always do, sorry, uh, uh, look at uh, the kidneys uh, with the kidney function. Uh, so the BMP or the CMP, but also with a urine analysis. All right, other symptoms. So I talked about the pulmonary. I talked about the kidneys. I talked about the skin. Uh, and then other is, of course, the joint. Uh, so you can have an inflammatory arthritis. So joint pain that's worse in the morning, associated with morning stiffness and sometimes with swelling of the joint. Um, and then literally almost every single organ can be affected, but the one that... I would say is really something that we have to look for uh, or that can be, you know, potentially a problem, a, a real problem is uh, the um, neuropathy because you can actually have a foot drop, a hand drop. Uh, so what we call uh, mononeuritis multiplex. Man, in medicine, we have so many, like, there's like an, a whole new language. <laughs> it's really complicated, but it's actually, it's not that complicated. Mononeuritis, so inflammation of one neuron, like one uh nerve multiplex in the sense of at several places. And so in uh, in neurology or in medicine, when we are thinking of neuropathy, we have the polyneuropathy. You're not seeing me here, but I'm showing my legs. And it's starting from the uh, bottom uh, of your feet all the way up. And it's the same thing with the hands all the way up. This is what we call polyneuropathy. And it's symmetric and it affects both limb at the same time. Um, but that's different than the mononeuritis multiplex because the multiplex means that you may have one foot affected, the arm affected, another uh, side affected. And it has, it's not symmetric and it's just like one nerve here, one nerve here, one nerve here. And when you have that, you have to think, is there a vasculitis going on? And anchor vasculitis is definitely one of them. Okay. Um, then, uh, so I said the nerve, so it can involve the eyes. So if you have eye inflammation, go and see your ophthalmologist. And of course, they work very well with us, rheumatologists. Um, you can have the inflammation of your nose. Um, it still happens, and you may have seen this, like the, there's inflammation of the bridge, and then you may actually lose the bridge. Uh, and um, ears, you can have like some inflammation of the ears. I've seen some patients where the ear is, is affected so severely that you lose the cartilage of the ear. Um, and um, the sinus can be affected as well. You can have some headaches uh, and so on. In general, it takes a very good physician uh, and a rheumatologist to really make the diagnosis of vasculitis. What I want you to realize is the diagnosis is going to take three things, right? One, your symptoms and how you're looking, so your clinical exam. Two, uh, um, the ANCA, checking if you have this antibody, all right? Those antibodies specifically. Uh, and so you can have the ANCA, and then you can have specifically MPO or PR3. Okay, so those are like two things. And usually Wegener or GPA is associated with the PR3. And then uh, the third thing is that we're going to get biopsy. So if you have kidney involvement, we're going to get a biopsy of your kidneys. If you have nerve involvement, we're going to get a, a biopsy of this. Why? Because it's going to tell us how much inflammation there is, if there is any fibrosis or scarring of the tissue. And it's really going to help us, like, is there so much inflammation that we need to blast it, okay, uh, with immunosuppression. All right, now the really good news. Once we've made a diagnosis, it's actually not hard to treat this um, in the sense it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't mean that, oh, you have a diagnosis tomorrow, you're going to be fine. No, no. But we have a diagnosis. We know how to treat you. And I think that that's actually something really important. Usually, and that's the same analogy that I use all the time, there's a fire, you stop the fire, and you may need a lot of water for your fire. And so the water in this case is immunosuppression, so we are most likely going to use steroids in your case. Uh, if you have this, uh, we would use steroids, and then we will use uh, something called rituxan, 
And um, there are now ways to make sure that you don't use steroids for too long. Uh, there is a treatment that costs a lot of money because it's fairly new. Uh, but it's, it does prevent the use of steroids. And so because it prevents the use of steroids, it prevents a lot of the complication. And uh, we have other treatment, of course, uh, but that's really the, the main one, the most common one are those ones. Uh, and we treat, this is, this is, uh, this is something we treat. Um, I would say that in general, the studies are showing that if you have a PR free, uh, so if you have Wagner with a PR free antibodies, you should stay on a maintenance dose, meaning that even if you go into remission, don't go off all treatment um, unless you play with fire in this case, right? And you're not afraid that it might come back. Um, the truth is that studies are showing that it might actually come back if you're not on maintenance therapy. So get your maintenance therapy and we have amazing treatments and they are not even that bad. Um, and so that's pretty much it for Wagner. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of subtleties, of course, it can affect a lot of other organs, of course, but those are like the main one. Um, in general, like if I have one take home message to give you is if you have any sort of pulmonary symptoms, anything like a little cough, like shortness of breath, anything, you know, right? Like, a, like if you're like feeling like you're doing ee, like this, um, get a chest X-ray, make sure. Yeah, that's very cheap. Your doctor should be able to order that. And please always, always check your uric, uh, urine uh, analysis. And so ask for this. Is there protein in my urine? Because the doctor will know exactly what to order in that case. Okay. If you are in rheumatology, uh, a rheumatology patient that needs more help in the Denver area or Colorado, I would be happy to see you. But otherwise, I hope you have enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.